Hey, church family, welcome to Wednesday night service. Thank you all for coming tonight. If you guys want to go ahead and stand up. Run across the aisle and give your neighbor a high five. See how many people do it. Oh, look at that. Look at the engagement. Y'all ready to worship? Come on, let's go. Jesus, we love you. Pray to have your way in this place. Draw us in deep, God. Teach us something new. Move on our hearts. Invade our praise in your name. Oh, Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaking. Oh, I've never been more glad, cause I put my faith in Jesus, oh, he's never let me down, he's faithful through Jesus.
for that tonight. And then while we go through, he's there with a solid foundation that we can trust in. God, we praise you. And no matter the storm, the trial, the season, whatever may try to shake us, Father, it can't because we know that we're, our house is built on you. Our faith is in you, Jesus, and the work that you did on the cross. So we stand in that freedom tonight, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Somebody look at your neighbor tonight and said, I know it. How about you? Come on. Come on, faithful ones. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise in his place tonight. Amen. Amen. He is faithful. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. I just look around this church. I see the things that are happening. 
that you're doing. Thank you for all those that gave to Kairos Prison Ministry, those cookies. And Daryl said, man, they just had a phenomenal time ministering there in the prisons. And it's because of your prayers, because of your donations. You look up on this platform tonight, look at that drum uh, cage, you know. Thank you, God. Uh, God, thank you, Ron Brink, for the time he's putting into that. And uh, you look out there in the foyer, how many of you are liking the renovations that you're seeing? Thank you, Jack and his company. And we just so many people that are giving. And we... I want to give you another opportunity to give. Uh, so tomorrow night, if you'd like to come at 7 o'clock, we're going to be in the kids' sanctuary getting candy ready for the Easter extravaganza. So this is a great outreach for the community to reach people with the gospel. And so if you can come tomorrow night and help us bag candy and get that ready, again, that'll be at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And then don't forget on Friday or Saturday, Saturday the Easter extravaganza is from 10 to 1 but if you'd like to come and help us set up with the slides and the rides and all the stuff, at 8 o'clock, people will be arriving and getting things ready on Saturday morning at 8 o'clock, all right? And then on Sunday, what Sunday? Hallelujah. You do serve a risen Savior or what? Praise God. Amen. Well, we're going to be at the lake at Lake Wiley, right beside uh, Papa Docks to the left of that at that landing. And we'll be joining churches from all over the community and that will be at 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock right beside Papa Doc's. And then, of course, our regular services in the morning here and then no PM service. So we're looking forward to being with the body of Christ. I do want to remind the men, don't forget, see me tonight if you're going to the men's comp conference, South Carolina men's conference in Columbia, April the 19th and 20th. And tonight the early bird rates are due. So see me right after church if you're going our own Alec and Lake Wiley Worship is going to be leaving, leading the worship plus some others, and that'll be fun. And then Dr. Ken, or rather uh, Chris Owen from Southeastern University, will be the anointed special speaker in some workshops, some really great things. But see me tonight, men, if you're planning on doing, going. Speaking of special, Pastor's got somebody special to introduce to you tonight. Come on, Pastor. And I, I guess also you want to let them know about tomorrow. I forgot to do that. Thank you, folks. Good to see you tonight. Amen. Tomorrow, many of you probably know Thomas. It's right in the back, the Korean ladies. There's three there, Bobby, Kim, and uh, son. Son's husband, Thomas, passed away. That funeral will be tomorrow. Many of you, if you go into Walmart here at Lake Wiley, you probably run into Thomas, okay, and talk with him. But uh, he went to be with the Lord, and so we're, the service will be visitations tomorrow at 10, and the funeral is at 11, 11 here at the church. So if you can, come by and uh, encourage their heart. There's some sweet, precious people. I want to tell you, if you get to meet them, they really are. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord tonight. God's good. Yes. <clears throat> tonight we do have, and you have heard him before, uh, but he's here tonight. He is going to minister. Bernie, you come on. Bernie Lewis. Now, Bernie pastored in Florida. Bernie has pastored in Rock Hill and kind of took that retirement. To, I, do you call it that, really, in ministry? But... Uh, you know, a man of God who has served the Lord and his wife, Susan. But thank God that uh, they, they get to share with us here. Uh, we appreciate it. I've known this brother. I can't tell you the hours. We've probably been on the phone together and talking, you know, and we can whine with one another. You know, preachers do that, right? Yeah, anyway. Bernie, we love you. Give him a hand. Would you do that? It's an honor to be with you, to share God's Word, and I realize that I'm speaking to the cream of the crop. Look at the person next to you and say, you cream of the crop. My dad... 50 years ago, whenever I started in the ministry, my first church, uh, he said, son, let me, let me just tell you something, because I don't want you to be shocked. He said, you'll find out how many people love the church by how many attend on Sunday morning. I said, oh, oh okay. He said, and you'll find out how many love you by how many attend on Sunday night. 
I said, oh, oh. And he said, you'll find out how many love God by how many attend on Wednesday night. We got a good representation here tonight. So it's a joy for me to be able to share God's word. You are the prayer warriors. You are the workers and the strong arms and the leaders of the church. And I know that what I'm going to be speaking on tonight, that it may not fit you like a glove, or at least you'll say it doesn't. You'll say, he's preaching to that person behind me. But most of you know how to share what you hear. And this will help you to be able to share with sons or daughters or neighbors or friends or brothers or sisters or even moms and dads. Years ago, when I wasn't in my first church, I was in my second one, a young man approached me right after service and he grabbed my arm with both hands and he said, Preacher, I need to talk to you right now. And I, I could just see a, a, a marvelous salvation coming. I said, Okay, yeah, uh, let's go down by the altar. And he said, No, I, I, I need to be in private. And I said, Well, let's go to my office and we went back to my office, and uh, he says, Preach, I'm losing my wife. I'm losing my daughter. Uh, I've lost my job, and I need help, and I need help bad. And I said, well, it sounds like it. He says, my granddaddy was a drunk, an alcoholic. My daddy was a drunk an alcoholic. My brother is an alcoholic, and I guess I am too. I can't keep a job. We're about to lose the house. Everything that I make, I spend up at the bar. I'm just like my daddy, and I'm just like my granddaddy, and well, it's just the way I am. I come by it honestly. Now, I'm still a young preacher at that point, and I don't know quite how to handle this. And I said, well, that's a lie from the pit of hell. He looked at me kind of funny, and I said, you're a liar. If you're going to say those kind of things, that's not God talking. That's the devil talking through you. He's got you convinced that you're an alcoholic long before you were one. Maybe you are now. But you listen to him, and you're following his orders. Now, I'm going to take care of him, and I'm going to take care of you. Get down on your knees. He fell down on his knees. I'd seen the good preachers. I'd seen the miracle workers. I'd been in some Oral Roberts and, and uh, e even uh, the lady, I can't think of what her name is, that wore the white gown. and Yeah, Catherine Kuhlman. I knew I'd remember it if somebody'd say it. <laughs> <clears throat> so I grabbed him by the ears and I started shaking the devil out of him. <laughs> and before we finished, the devil came out of him. He was set free. And I said, You don't have to drink anymore. You are totally set free by the power of Jesus. 
Now, don't start listening to those lies again because it'll get you in trouble. And he said, would you go talk to my wife? And I said, no, you're going to go talk to your wife. I, I ain't going in there. She tear my head off. I want to see more of those kind of things taking place. For the entire 50 years of my ministry, I've heard people confess, I am a liar, I am a negative person, I, I treat people awful, I'm, I'm a mean man. I've got a terrible temper, I can't help it. It's just the way that I am. It's not just the way you are. It's the way you have chosen to be. So if you can't help it, it's just the way I am, you're in the right place tonight. And I want us to share some things. There's some church people that I've heard say, Preacher, I, I can't help it. It's just the way I am. I've prayed about it. But God didn't help me, so I guess it's going to be the way I am the rest of my life. So my question to them and my question to you is, have you ever really stopped to wonder what your purpose in life is and what your future really holds for you? Did God form you in your mother's womb to be bound by something that's going to keep you from the destiny that God's appointed you to. When we listen to the lies of the world or the lies of Satan and let him convince us that we're not going to rise up, we'll never get out of the hole, we're going to be, be pushed further down, then he is robbing you of the destiny and the blessings that God has promised you. And it's time that some of us started standing up on our hind legs and saying, you are, are defeated in the name of Jesus. He's already took care of you. Now get out of my house and stop lying to me. Get out of my life. In the power of the name of Jesus. Have you ever stopped to realize that where you are right now, is because of the decisions that you have made. Good or bad, you might be in a real good place. It's because of the decisions you've made. You might be in a bad place. It's because of the decisions you made. You might be broke. It's because of the decisions you've made. You might have a lot. Of, it's because of the decisions you made. You are where you are and who you are because of who you listen to and the decisions that you made. The actions that you took on those decisions that you made and the habits that you have formed in your life because of those actions that you took. Who we listen to who talks to us in our minds and in our hearts, controls our thinking. That's why it's so important that we devour this book. The more of this book you can stuff down in your heart, the more like Jesus you're going to become. 
and the better decisions that you're going to make, the better actions that you're going to take, the, 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 the better outcome you're going to have. It's kind of like old Coleman Lackey said about uh, when he was a kid, he used to pick cotton and he'd drag that cotton sack all the way to the end of the row and sometimes he'd have to kick it to get it to go around to the next row so that he could go back in the other direction. And he says when he would kick it, he said, you know what flew out of that bag? Cotton. You know why cotton flew out of the bag? Because that's what was in it. Whatever you got down inside of you, when the devil comes by and kicks you, it's coming out. And if Jesus is down inside of you, it's Jesus that's coming out. And he ain't going to kick you but once. Because if Jesus comes out, he's going to leave you alone. So look, look with me. I better read scripture before I go too far. Uh, l look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 for, for just a second, or we can read it. it it'll, be, it'll be up there. For we are his workmanship. That means that God made us. We are his handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. So when you were being formed in your womb, God had an idea of what he wanted you to do. He had a plan. That's what he told Jeremiah. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and I had a plan for your life. Now, that didn't just apply to Jeremiah because of Ephesians 10. It applies to every one of us that belongs to him. John 10.10, 10, you can flip over there real quick. It's over just a little ways you go left. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal. Now, Jesus is talking. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it. King James says abundantly. The NIV says to the full. The Amplified says to the full. And running over. I like that one. So many times in life, if we're not careful, we're blaming God for things that he had nothing to do with. Sometimes when bad things happen in our lives, we have setbacks, we have hardships. We say, God, why did you allow that? Why, why did you cause that to happen in my life? I don't deserve that. Please understand something, that there is a devil that's been loosed in this world and he's prowling the earth, looking for somebody to devour, and he hates you because you love Jesus. He wants to kill your joy. He wants to steal your prosperity. And he wants to destroy your life. And if he can, he will. Well, why doesn't God do something about him? He did. He sent his son who defeated the devil and gave us authority over him. Jesus died on the cross, but he went to hell and cleared it out and took the keys with him of death, hell, and the grave and put Satan in his place. 
And Satan limped for a good while after that. I believe it. But he gave you and me the authority and the right to withstand him. If we don't do anything, if we don't use that authority, why should heaven use authority? If we won't do it, why should they do anything? We complain and wonder, why, why don't God do that? Do something. He did something. And then he gave us all the rights, all the authority that we would ever need. Remember, Jesus had authority over the devil, and he defeated him, and he gave us the authority. And Paul said, if we'll resist him, he'll flee from us. How do we do that? We use God's word. That's how Jesus did it. When the devil came to him when he was on the backside of the desert, fasting, he said, it is written. It is written. It is written three times. And then Satan left him alone. If life has become stagnant for you, if problems are stacking up at your front door, then my question is, what are you claiming from God's Word? What are you declaring from God's Word? Which Word are you standing on and resisting Satan? How are you applying it? If we have not been declaring something from God's Word, if we have not been uh, claiming something that is present on these pages, then why should God step in? We'll be sitting back doing doing nothing while He does everything. He's already given us the authority and the right. If we're not speaking that word, then the angels don't have anything to move on. Now, it says in Matthew that you and I have ministering spirits that minister for us. Angels. In Psalms 103.20, it says, Bless the Lord, you angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. So when you stand and proclaim God's word, then the angels, they hear that word of God, and they begin to move. Every time I go to the hospital to visit somebody, I, I, I begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, you said that you were our protector and that you would keep your hand on us. I put an angel here and an angel here, and I want an angel on the head of the bed, and I want an angel on that side of the bed. So, angels, you take your place. Protect this person. In the name of Jesus. And I believe it works. Now, I didn't do that at first. And when I, in my first job, real job in the ministry, I, I was an associate at uh, Sebring. And the first three people I went to visit died. And then people would call and say, Pastor Lewis, Pray, don't come. (laughs) They 
They didn't want to die. I knew I had a problem. I'm going to lose the church. When we speak in authority, when we speak in the name of Jesus, and we speak God's word in authority and faith, the angels that surround us, and there's more of them than they are of us, they heed God's word that comes out of you. Now, you can't get ridiculous with it. They, they, they won't pay any attention to you if you get way off out in the atmosphere someplace and become a space cadet. But if you're speaking the Word and you're standing on the Word, then we have a team that's working with us. And greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And we start overcoming. You and I can use God's word, our God-given authority, to take authority over negative thoughts in the same way. When negative thoughts start bombarding our brains, we can take authority over that. I, get out of here. I don't want you. And negative emotions... We can take care of those. We can take authority over the stuff or the junk that's coming against marriage, our marriage. We can take authority over the pressures that are coming against our children. We have all kinds of authority and rights that some of us aren't taking. And... Some people aren't taking them because they don't know they can. You need to tell them. That, that preacher said that we could. No, God said we could, not the preacher. I'm just the messenger. Satan would like nothing more than to trip you up and there's no faster way than to hurt your kids. That'll get to you every time. You can take authority over him when he starts putting that extra pressure on our children. I don't care if they're only five years old or six years old going to the first grade or in kindergarten or whatever. You can every morning pray over them, Jesus, protect them. Angels go with them, and you don't have to try to do everything everybody tells you to do. Just because Johnny jumps off the building, you don't have to jump off the building. My dad told me that, and I proved him wrong. Mike jumped off the building, and I had to. Because he said I couldn't be his friend anymore if I didn't jump off the building. So I did. And I lived through it because I'm here today. And we were watching television, and it was on Saturday morning, and we only had a black and white TV. That's when they made those things. And a guy was walking a tightrope wire with an umbrella. And I said, Dad, if he fell, would he float down with that umbrella? And he said, no, he weighs too much. It would turn backwards and he'd fall right down. And I said, why has he got it? He said, well, it helps stabilize him. Oh, okay. And I thought for a second, and I said, well, if he carried a parachute, if he fell, the parachute would open, wouldn't it? He said, well, it might, but it probably would No, you ain't doing that. Well, I waited a few minutes and thought he'd probably forget. I went in, took the sheet off my bed, climbed out the window, went around the back of the house to the TV antenna, climbed up the TV antenna, 
run over to where the grass was thicker in the front, tied that thing together and grabbed a hold of it and tried to get it open up and jumped off. But it just went, and I, boom. And Dad, he, he was telling my uncle about it, and he says, and I'm laying there on the couch, and here's my stupid kid, boom, with his sheet fluttering behind him. <laughs> Fell right in front of the picture window. I didn't realize there was a picture window right in front of the house. I'd have jumped off in the back so that I wouldn't get caught. Sometimes we get caught doing crazy stuff we, we, for our own preservation. Don't do crazy stuff, and don't do anything you hear me talking about like that. <laughs> Heaven is waiting for us to become obedient and to walk in authority and to walk in faith. What are you going to do about your situation when it's rough, when the problems come, when your mind is full of fear or negative thoughts, when, when your children are crying and, and somebody's picking on them or, or things are hard for them and they're, Mama, can you help me? Daddy, can you help me? What are we going to do? We need to get the word and apply it to their situation and get the victory for them. And sometimes they need to hear us stay, say, Satan, I stand against you in Jesus' name. I bind you in the name and the authority of the name of Jesus. He said your knee's going to bow, and you might as well start right now. I claim the authority that's in that name because his blood has washed me clean. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. He gave me and my family authority over you. I have life in abundance till it overflows in Christ Jesus. The, the, the Amplified says the thief comes in order to steal from you, to kill, and to destroy. And I came that you might have life and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. If Jesus came, that we could have and enjoy life in abundance to the full till it overflows, that must be a big part of his will for our lives. He came and put his life on the line so that we could have the abundant life and have the authority. Don't allow Satan to steal your stuff. Don't let him steal your joy. God has a part. He took that first big step. Jesus did his part. He won the victory, and now we need to do our part, which is to take their parts and apply it. There are steps that we can take. I want to tell you those steps. It's going to take a while. And I didn't put it in your notes because I didn't think I'd get this far. But I was going to tell you anyway. I figure we're friends enough that he wouldn't hurt me but once. 
So there's steps to take. And you might want to jot, jot these down. You don't have to. Y'all know that. But just in case you might want to recall it later. The, what's the first thing we need to do? We need the Word of God. Everything starts with the Word of God. So the first thing we do, we need the Word of God. God started with His Word in the very beginning. God said, in the very beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Every time God spoke, the firmament, the universe, all obeyed. If when God speaks that nothing of existence comes alive in that voice, if there's that much authority, then when we use his words, that same authority is going out of us. And the entire universe will listen to us when we do it in faith, in Christ, and in author his authority. So we start with the word of God, and we keep putting the word of God in our mind. And the more we put in, the stronger we're going to become because we'll start giving some of that out. Because the words you listen to will form your thoughts. They will start directing your thoughts. That's why Mama used to say, if you go out there and run with those pigs and lay with those pigs and eat with those pigs, then, son, you're going to start looking like and acting like and smelling like those pigs. She was right. I did, and I did. If you allow the word of Satan or the world to get in between your ears and you listen to the news, all the bad, all the horrible things there, pretty soon it's going to begin to affect your joy. It's going to affect your thinking. And it's going to have control over certain parts of your life. So the words you listen to produce the thoughts that you have. God's word will produce thoughts. And those thoughts that you have will determine the emotions that rise up inside of you. Some of those emotions will be defeat. Some of those emotions could be great joy. Some of those emotions might be, I have authority. The emotions that you have, whether good or bad, whether the, the, the thinking and the emotions and how you feel inside is full of pain or full of pleasure, it comes from what you're listening to, but the, those emotions that arise out of that will begin to force your direction in life. You must ensure that the right thing is coming in so that the right thoughts will be formed, that the right emotions can be experienced 
so that the right direction can be taken. Emotions will produce the direction that you take in life. God is showing that our overflow is at hand and that we must position ourselves for it. Our emotions determine our direction. So the more of God's Word I get into my heart, the more it will penetrate my thoughts, the more it will cause my thoughts to produce uh, my, my uh, emotions and how I feel inside. And out of all of that will come the directions that I begin to take. And my directions will produce in me action. The actions that I will take in life comes from the direction that I'm going. All of it, if you follow it back, starts with the Word of God. But when my direction causes my action, then there's another step there, and actions produce habits. Because you repeat the same thing over and over and over, and pretty soon it just becomes a habit. And that's where we get, I, I, I guess that's just the way I am. We've produced a habit, and we're following the habit. But if it's God's Word that it's all based upon, then we're going to be producing good habits. So none of these things in themselves are good or bad. It just depends on what it starts with. So the Word of God produces our thoughts, which produce our emotions, which produce our decisions, which produce our actions, which will produce our habits. And out of the habits that we form comes our character. You will never rise above your character. The character that you have will determine where you are in life. Because bad character can never rise above it. It'll pull you back down every time. So if you want to progress and continue to grow and to continue to be an influencer for God in the world, you must correct your character or make sure that your character is correct and then you can rise above it all because out of your character comes your destiny. You'll never fulfill the destiny that God has purposed in his heart for you until you get all the other parts of your life squared away. Quit being ruled by fear or anger or hate. Not allowing Satan to get in your mind. Not, not forming bad habits, letting it destroy your character. Then you can become all that God wants you to be. You've got friends that need to hear this. You've got children that need to experience it. And they need to see you pattern it before them, modeling it before them. 
God's Word is the birthing place for everything from the very beginning to the very end. God's Word will produce proper thinking. Your thoughts will produce proper emotions. Your emotions will produce proper decisions. Your proper decisions will produce proper actions. And your proper actions will produce proper habits which will produce proper character, which will take you to your destination. So it all starts with God's Word. Bow your heads with me for a moment, would you please? Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, at whose name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord of lords, King of kings. God, I'm asking that we would be the people that you want us to be. God, I, I, I know some of these folks, and they're the cream of the crop. So, God, let us come in contact with those that are hungry for more of you. And let us feed them. And those that might be in this room right now, Lord, that are struggling, maybe difficulty, hardship, something they never asked for. Something that Satan has sent to attack them. I'm asking for freedom by the authority of the name of Jesus. Lord, move in this house. You have the power. Would you stand with me, please? Jesus, move up and down these aisleways, in and out of these rows. And if there's a heart that's there that needs your hand upon it right now, bring relief God help us to heed these words and we'll praise you for it in Jesus name musicians are going to play and there's going to be a song in a moment if you're having a struggle or maybe your children or whatever are struggling and you'd like to come to this altar and just pray. Say, God, I apply these things. I want more of your word. Then I invite you to come and just kneel right here, right now. Pastor and some of the other pastors, myself, we will lay hands on you and we'll pray for you. So as we begin to sing, if there's a struggle in your household or in your heart and you just need to talk to Jesus, this altar is open right now. Thank you, sir. Oh. 